Hey everyone, thank you for joining me. Okay, so before I go into zone focusing, I have to mention critical focus. And critical focus is when you get the lens to focus on your subject deliberately by turning the focus ring onto your subject. I use critical focus when I'm taking portraits of people and I wanna focus right on their eye. But this video is about zone focusing and zone focusing is where your subject actually walks into the zone of focus. Think of zone focusing as a large fish net that you've cast that has a wide depth of field. This video is for anyone with a rangefinder camera or a manual lens who wants to maximize the use in effort to nail focus. Um, before I go and shoot, I usually think about how close do I want to be to my subject and I'll set that distance. Oftentimes I'm at eight feet. Second, I will choose my f-stop. When I'm zone focusing, I almost always start with f8. With those settings, I know that I can get as close as an arm's distance and still catch focus even two arm distances and still get good focus. Zone focusing can be tricky when you don't fully understand all of its working parts. And today I'll do my best to help you understand those parts. Zone focusing works best when you have a deep depth of field. And you get a deep depth of field when you have a high f-stop number on your lens. Like right here, I have a 16. The higher the f-stop number, the deeper the depth of field or your fishnet. In my photo walk, and I'll link that above and below, I used an f-stop of eight, and I got decent, predictable results, and that's what you want, predictable results. To check my math, I'll be using an app called Photo Pills. I paid like nine bucks for it, I think, uh, but they also have a depth of field calculator on their website, and I'll link that in the show notes down below for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch the app, and I'll share my screen so you can see what I'm doing. Feel free to browse all of the cool features that it has if you downloaded the app. If you're on the website, you're just using the depth of field calculator. But you wanna go ahead and input your camera, input your focal length, your aperture, and lastly, your distance from your subject. For example, in this case, I'm using eight feet. Once you do that, you will get this cool diagram of all the information you need. I'm a visual person, so this helped me fully understand zone focusing like never before, really. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that diagram means when you are on the lens, how it translates when you're actually uh, inputting your settings into the lens. On the first uh, set of numbers, we have our f-stop. On the second set of numbers that are actually orange is our distance in meters. And underneath the orange numbers, we have our distance in feet. And then at the very uh, top part, closest to the camera, we have our corresponding apertures. So now what we're gonna do is gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set up my camera to match what we've been talking about. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my lens to F8 right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my distance marker, since I'm stateside, I'm gonna put this to eight feet. That's, that's my distance markings, I'm at eight feet. So I'm at F8 on the lens, and I'm at eight feet on the lens as well, distance-wise. So all that really matters is this F8 to this F8. And between those two parts, you basically have your depth of field. So in summation and looking at this graph, our results tell us that the furthest object in focus will be at a far limit of 15.2 feet, while the closest thing that you can get in focus starts at 5.5 feet, and that is our near focus limit. Our sweet spot though, our zone of focus or depth of field is 9.8 feet deep, on this 35 millimeter set to f8 at a distance of eight feet away so that's it for me today uh, if you like the video give it a thumbs up subscribe uh, for more content uh, leave me a note down below maybe you know something that i forgot to mention and um until my next video let's keep creating